Hi, my name is Sasha. Welcome to your cauldron reading. You can check the juice box for all the juicy juicy. And let's get into your reading. Now, I'm not exactly sure why this keeps happening, but it's happened before, and it just happened again where the cards uh, just flew directly onto the bowl. So I'm just going to leave them there. So the first message is all about connection, your connection to yourself, to your home, to all the inhabitants of the planet. Uh, connection to not only your bloodline, uh, but to all in society. And this connection is your sustenance. This is what sustains your life force. Uh, I'm getting the sensation that everything comes down to this connection that you have with all living things, with the earth. And this is also what brings you your sense of home and safety and trust. When you restore your connection with all living things, understanding that we're all one, Understanding that your heart, your heartbeat is the earth's heartbeat. Understanding that your eyes are the stars. Uh, just feeling that connection deeply in your body as well as knowing it. I'm also hearing uh, something I haven't heard in a long time. That is, to use the power, you must know it in your mind, but feel it in your heart. You must feel it in your heart. So this was the first card. Trust yourself. Develop your connection. The second message is in this trusting, in this knowing of yourself. Take time to honor your direction, even if you have to change course. For some of you, especially if you're very empathic, there's a sensation of going into the depths, especially to save others or to shine your light for others. Uh, but this is not necessary this time. The time frame now is about shining your light outward and restoring your connection. No matter what other people are depending on you for, usually they're depending on you for your light source. I'm also hearing the word euphoria. There are some people who are drawn to your sense of euphoria. And these people will reach out and grab a hold of you. They'll grab onto your energy. They'll pull you back. They'll try to harness you, contain you. So continue in your quest. Uh, but I'm really hearing that there's a need to take a 180. This card is called Against the Grain. So as you do this, you will begin to go through those deeper layers of emotions, especially feeling lethargic. This has a connection to the actual brain chemistry. 
for instance, if you begin to start a new habit, you have to first remove the old habit and replace it with the new one. But you have to reprogram yourself with taking away the old. So even if you've had something repetitive, you have to figure out that place within yourself where you can remove it, where you can truly unite with that part of yourself that was stuck or frozen or lost or displaced and re refeel i don't want to say relive but refeel lean into refeel all those stuck emotions briefly until you can release them and as you do this process and you begin to form a new habit it does take time and it does take repetition because this is the neuroscience in the brain. This is uh, that, that spark, the, that electricity in the brain hemispheres. So there will be a lot of resistance at first that you have to cross. And this could be part of this 180 as well. Shifting and changing and going in a brand new direction. Uh, there will be things that seem like obstacles, but this is about retraining your brain. So they're not really obstacles. You just have to understand what it is that you're up against. So this is a process where you begin reinventing yourself by feeling again with that connection in your heart what is true for you now. If you're not giving all of your energy away to other people, but you're infusing your life with vitality, it's going to feel awkward and strange. It'll feel like a new sensation at first. So this is much like coming out of codependency, but this is like really investing in yourself. This is a time of I'm hearing a bunch of words, but the essence is fortune. You're coming into your own fortune. So this is where you paint a new picture. This is a golden place that you're coming into, a place of sweetness. And as you really enliven yourself and find new talents and gifts and joys and follow your bliss, even if other people don't like it, this is what you have to do for yourself. The card here is come to life. This is teaching you how to become playful again. And as you do this process and you get really good at nourishing yourself, and you get really into your heart space. You begin to listen to your intuition and follow it and open up to hearing that call. This can be the call of your ancestors forwards and backwards through time. This can also be just working very creatively. This is where you'll begin to see your own illumination. You'll step outside of time and space and you'll really begin to work within your soul's purpose more. And this is teaching you to remember yourself. And it's also about knowing that you are the key. And it's time for you to awaken. So there's no sense fighting things anymore. It's not about fighting things and having conflict and battling within yourself. It's uh, recognizing why there's a battle and moving past it. Not just bypassing it, moving through it, transcending it, moving past it. So this is where you'll truly bring your own unique gift into the world that will change your own dreams, it will change your whole life. It will change the lives of others. This is where you begin to think for yourself 
You begin to release all that programming and that dogma that you've taken on that was never yours in the beginning. And you begin to shift into an illuminated being. Some of you, I don't know why, but I also heard the word equestrian. So, I'm going to begin your cauldron reading now. I'm being shown the sun. It's actually like a drawing of the sun. And that's a little bit of a wordplay, but the meaning is drawing in your own divine ray of sunlight. So in the Toltec psychology, philosophy, understanding of the world, as you are born, you are a ray of light. And you receive your, full, your fourfold body system, your physical body, your etheric body, your emotional and mental bodies. And inside of that, your soul essence has its own ray of light. And outside of that, we call that part of you the little dreamer. Outside of that, we call it the bigger dreamer. The big dreamer. Uh, this is when you first open your eyes at the time of your birth and the light of this world touches your little dreamer. This is where you get imprinted. So in a sense this is all-encompassing. You are the the big and little dreamer of your own dream. And everyone has a big and little dreamer and everyone has a big dream. So your dream can be what you have taken on as a projection of disconnection. When you're little, you don't have that disconnection. You haven't taken on all of the imprinting, all that disassociation and fragmentation. So when you take time to reconnect those places within yourself between your big and little dreamers, that is when, in essence, you come back home to yourself. So take time out to honor the sun, honor the ray of light that you are, and Literally, wake up at sunrise, go outside and greet the sun. All the animals do it. This is something that you are. You're connected to all life forms on the planet. We're all connected to the sun. So go out at first light and draw in your own ray of light. Reconnect yourself. And create that bridge between your big and little dreamer. So there's a lot of deprogramming and unlearning and undoing that you have to do. Not doing and doing. Not doing and doing. And this is part of what you are going to be initiated into as you take on this new process of reconnecting yourself. So I'm also being shown the moon. This is linking you to the cosmos and the moon cycles and the eclipses. These are the events that help you to grow, that nurture you, that push you forward and help you to learn. Also, the moon will store your limitations. So every time you allow yourself to receive something that you want, it's 
released from the moon bank. It's completed. It is not stored as a limitation for you anymore. I'm also seeing books, okay? There's a there's a stack of books. Maybe even five. Definitely four. Some of them have green covers, some of them have blue covers. These are hardcover books. These are books of knowledge, books of truth, books of growth and expression. So this is a time of learning and study. This is gravitating towards a teacher. This is compiling. This is taking notes. This is... I'm hearing for some of you, you may have underestimated either yourself or something. So this is a time again where you Go deeply into what has held you back, not to repeat any conflict, but just to find the understanding so that you can move through it effortlessly with ease and grace into that connected whole person that you are. So repairing connections, beginning with those things that are buried deep inside of yourself is part of the key, it's part of the answer. I'm also seeing animals that are coming in for some of you. So for some of you, you may want to find out what your totems are. You can always book me to help with this. I can do shamanic journey work on your behalf to help connect you to those allies and helping spirits, as well as what any kind of messages come through from your guides. So one animal that wants to speak right now is the moose. The moose has a message about diving to the bottom of a lake in order to find nutrients. So this is a message about As you go deep into your own psychology, into your subconscious, into your shadow work, into your dreaming world, into that place where you face your fears and your limitations and scarcity of any kind, this is where you will find what also feeds you and nurtures you. It's dualistic. It's part of the same strand. It's part of the same energy wave. And you get to choose which aspect of this polarity that you feed. So within this work, you will also be opening up to maybe your clear audience. Some of you also psychic vision. You'll be able to clairvoyantly see things that you maybe were not aware of before. And if this is maybe your first time sensing in this way, it can be a little bit interesting, a little bit tricky. You may need to call on a teacher or a guide or a mentor just as a precautionary because when you begin to open up in this way, it's important to keep yourself safe and to have kind of like a, a goal is not the right word, but to have a structure and a container, something that can sustain you while you're opening up so that you can then stay on the correct and the right path for you. So I'm also seeing a flower. This is also a place in your own spirituality where you'll be coming spiritually enlightened. And this is also this can be experienced as a great awakening or a synchronistic event that just triggers you in a very deep and profound way. 
And this can be so beautiful that you may want to stay in touch and stay connected to this moment through all of time, and you will. But also, things are always evolving and changing. So this is a temporary phase of flowering as well. It's beautiful, it's intrinsic, it's profound, but it's not meant to last forever. So enjoy this time period of spiritual growth as you nourish yourself. Enjoy this time period where you're opening up and exploring these new avenues of yourself where you're getting in touch with yourself and getting in touch with your gifts and opening up to a higher awareness. Because after the flowering, you got to get to work. So there's just one more message in your cauldron reading today, and that is the remembrance of the heart. And of course, restoring your connection to your heart and honoring the heart, doing everything in love, in that higher essence of love. If it's not done with heart, if it's not done with love, there's no sense doing it at all. It won't have fruit. So in everything done with love is goodness. 